Thank you for joining me again today. This is Cheap Crypto Miner, again with another slightly different video, but it's, it mingles with Chia. And uh, some of you have asked me to do a video comparing several other coins that are related to storage. Very different than Chia, uses the same tools, hard drives mostly or any space that you want to make available. I'm going to keep light on the income. I'm going to leave that up to you because there are too many factors that is going to affect how much money how much money you make, such as if you get paid in some of these networks in their native coin, that coin has a value and it's based just like Chia on that daily value. What is it worth at that time? And I'm going to show you some charts that will show you where they were, where they are, I mean, to be fair, most crypto is down. Uh, some of them are considerably, considerably down. I mean, I just looked up Ethereum today, and it's about less than half of what it was a year ago. But nevertheless, um, just uh, we'll, we'll get into the nitty-gritty of these three different coins after my intro. So I stay with me, watch the whole video, and as always, if you like, please click on like. And if you haven't subscribed, Please consider it. It's a small thing for you, but it's a big deal to me. So let's move on. So let's talk about Filecoin next. Now, Filecoin is basically a location that is a decentralized storage location. In other words, people can pay to store their data on it. It's decentralized. The Apparently, the files are divided among uh, different um, hashes. It does not use an IP address to find your location based on the information they're providing. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a location where it cannot be uh, controlled by outside sources, that's what they claim, and you basically can store anything. And before I forget, the one point that they are big on is there's no censorship. So their um, central, decentralized um, system has no censorship. So. As I said, there's nobody censoring you. So whatever you choose to store, you can, uh, which as far as I'm concerned, it has some legal ramifications, but I will digress from that conversation. You could probably assume what I'm talking about. Uh, and it's important that you consider all angles. Uh, just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean that you should, or if you do, you need to make sure that you cover legally. But let's talk a little bit about the store section on the website. Basically, it, um, it uses your free storage area. Whatever you have as storage, uh, you, you, know, you can store on space that you have left over on a hard drive, on SSD, on some server that you may have space in. Uh, and, and they are a Web3 solution. So it's a different alternative to cloud storing. And... Uh, apparently it interoperates better and it, you're allowed to save more data for less money now my understanding and don't call me on this but my understanding is that it's less than a penny per gigabyte for full year of storage about it now keep in mind Filecoin is a is a coin that you get paid as or paid in for giving or lending your storage space. Your machinery needs to be on 99.9%, 99.5% of the time up. Uh, and they have some other requirements that you can look, look into if you're really interested in it. Uh, they, they, um, their biggest thing is that, you know, it, they make it very easy for you to install the software. The pricing, this refers to pricing if you are an end consumer looking to store something in the cloud in their system, uh, is is they have something called the Falcon Plus, which is zero terabyte per year. I'm not sure if that's still on or what that actually means or how big your storage is. But if you ch take their standard Filecoin, it's less than a dollar per terabyte per year, which is that's where the uh, about a penny, less than a penny. Per gigabyte for year is, um, which is dirt cheap. I mean, I may even consider filing some stuff in there instead of keeping um, all of my files, especially my video files that take so much space. 
So I went to um, to Coin Market to show you the price of uh, of, of the of Filecoin. And instead of looking at one day, let's look at the last year. And as you can see, they've been on the downtrend, uh, considerable downtrend for the last year. And uh, they were at one point, what is wrong with this mouse? They were at one point at $117, $120. They were at some point at $120. And today they're floating somewhere around $8, which is, yep, $8.54. Um, but then again, you know, is that their fault or is that just the crypto winter that we seem to be experiencing and nobody's calling it that? I don't know. But if you are putting your hard drives just like people doing the same with Chia, and you see Chia dropping and dropping and dropping, and last time I looked, there was somewhere, Chia was somewhere around $38, $39. Uh, you know, it, it, your storage cost or profit, I should say, your storage profit has gone down considerably. But again, you know, if you're in it for the long term, if you have spare drives that you really don't need, or you just basically dedicated those for this application and you're just letting it run and letting it run, um, then, you know, you got nothing to worry about. Let's talk a little bit about other than pricing. Um, it is decentralized. It uses a different format to find the data that people store on it. So it doesn't use IP addresses like some other systems. It uses a hash system to find out where it's located. And it uses, now IPFS is the name of the storage system. That's where the actual data is stored. It's not stored in the blockchain. Unlike Chia that stored things in the blockchain or on a separate layer on the blockchain. Uh, the Filecoin itself is a way you get paid and it's the way money is transacted via coins in the storage system. So that's very important. Uh, again, it's also decentralized. A couple points I want to bring up about um, the Filecoin issue. Filecoin does not promise uh, information storage for eternity, meaning that they, uh, unlike uh, Airweave, which is Amazon's, I believe, um, which promises data to be there forever, um, they don't. Also, there's been some speculation. I cannot certify this, but of data being lost in within their network. Uh, I know that Air we've had the same problem where some NFTs have gone missing. Um, and that's one of the flaws on the system. Unlike Chia, which once it's in the blockchain, it's there, regardless if it's on a, a different layer. But that's something that you should definitely think about. Um, I wouldn't think that you'd be held liable for that data loss or breach, but I wouldn't know. I'm not a lawyer. So again, you want to definitely do some research on this coin and on this IPFS network, which is where the data is stored. And that's as much data as I'm really um, comfortable sharing with you today. Uh, I would like you to go ahead and do your own research before you sign up. And uh, if you have not uh, uh, subscribed yet, please do. If you like this video, please click on like. It's a small thing for you, but it's a very big deal for me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.